In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps Convert an Image. So one of the things that you guys often want to do is send images in emails and PDFs, maybe in components. So there's lots of different places we want to do images, but it's sometimes hard to work with the image file. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Base64 encoding. I promise it's easy. And then how you can use that plug and play all over your apps. Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about converting your images. So in Power Apps, we often have to work with images, and we've talked about uploading them and capturing them and different things. But another thing you often find yourself having to do is work with them mechanically, right? So for example, I had a customer who wanted to uh, do email signatures when they sent out emails, and they wanted the company logo or they want the company logo on an invoice PDF, right? Or just places where you want to use images. And the one that really made me want to make this video was in my previous one where I talked about components, I showed you guys that, hey, the media doesn't really come across. So I figured out how to use this trick to send the media so that they would be included in your components. So that's like the big reason that got me to do it. But this is just a core skill that I think a lot of you need in your toolbox. And it sounds scary because we're going to talk about base 64. Woo! It's like that Star Wars base my kid built back there. But it's not because I'm going to show you how we're going to get to base 64 with zero effort. And then once we've got the base 64, how you can just plug that in in different places in Power Apps and you're off to the races. Okay? So hopefully you're bought in. I know this is not a super exciting topic, but I promise it's a core skill set. So let's switch over to my desktop and teach you guys how to do this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do over here on my desktop is let's talk about the image that you want to compose, right? So maybe it is a company logo, you know, it's going to be something standard, right? Because it's not like a all the time thing. This is like, hey, I just need this image and I want to be able to use it. It's most likely why you're doing it. So for example, for us, let's grab Chewy's nose. And now the first big mistake, no, let's not do Chewy's nose. It's too small. It's not as compelling. So let's go Chewy, you don't want what you don't want. So the first thing you want to do is I want you to look at the image and look at the size, right? So its dimensions are 3,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, and it's 2.6 megs. That's a lot of data to encode, okay? So what I want you to do before you go down this road, or as you're going down this road, is figure out how big do you want the image to be. So what you might do is pull it into your Power App or into your PDF report or your email and figure out, you know, what size are you looking for? Do you want it to be 200 pixels by 300? You know, what works in your scenario? So if we go over here real quick, and maybe I'll insert an image control. So insert media and an image. And so then I'm going to add this in here. And so where is it? Chewy you don't want. And so when I put it in here, I'm be like, all right, this came in, it's great. Now what, notice what happens here is Power Apps dynamically resized it, so it kind of looks a little goofy, but if you pull it out, right, it gets different sizes. So figure out the size you want to use the image. So that's great, right? There it looks, that's too big. I want to use just this little picture of Chewy's face up here in the corner. So I'm gonna kind of tighten the box in, like, all right, that, yeah, let's see, about like that looks good to me. And so then now I'm gonna look over here and be like, all right, size-wise, I got it 92 by 98. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna, first thing you need to do is you need to go shrink your image down, okay? So I'm gonna use a tool like Snagit Editor. So I'm gonna open that. And so then over here in Snagit Editor, I'm gonna say open, and I'm gonna go find that picture of Chewy. So we'll be like, all right, where is Chewy you don't want? There we go. And so it pulls it in, look, there's that 3000 by whatever again. And so I'm like, all right, well, I really just want you to be 98 tall. So I'm gonna go here to height. I'm gonna set you to 98. And then it's gonna resize the image for me. I'm going to apply that. And then I'm gonna save it. So file and save as. And then I just typically put dash 98 at the end. So that way I know how many pixels I've made something. It's one of my patterns, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I've got the file down the size I want. So what do you do next? Then you need a base 64 encoder. And so I went out and Googled, I have no idea who these people are, but there's a website called base64-image.de. I don't know, maybe they're stealing all my images. Don't really care. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, hey, where's my photo? I'm gonna grab that photo. And so when you put it out here, it is going to encode it for you into the base 64. And what's important to understand is that look, it got a little bit bigger, it went from three and a half K to four K. So 
I didn't want though that ginormous, remember we had the uh, the really big like three and a half, two and a half megs or whatever. I didn't want that because what happens if you show code is that that entire, every image of the, you know, the three and a half K, 4.7 K, whatever it is, that all goes into, you know, there's ones and zeros type of things for every one of those. So this string that you see right here, this is the base 64 encoding. It is as big as the file is. So that's why you want to get the file down to the smallest amount possible because you don't want to carry around any more than you have to. But now that we've got that, I'll say copy to clipboard and then we'll go back over to Power Apps where we're a lot more comfortable. But this, this is just a great little tool. I don't care what you use. I, I have no affiliation with these people. This is a great tool though for me to get the base 64. So, because what we can do now, we'll just delete this one out. Or no, we won't delete it. We'll just delete out the Chewy picture is right here in the image, I can just do the, the my double quotes, paste in the stuff I got from those guys, and then close my quotes, and there is Chewy, right? There is that image file pulled into my app, but instead of it being media that I attach, it is really just all of these bits and bytes, or whatever you call these things, all these letters and numbers, I don't know. It's all of this gibberish turns into this pretty picture of Chewy. And so you can see if I kind of bring it up, it gets blurry, why, right? Because now Power Apps is like stretching the pixels. We didn't change the number of pixels. Whereas earlier with that other one, when we, you know, it was having to shrink the pixels. So it was clearer when it got bigger. That's why you needed to figure out how big the image is you wanted to use or where you were gonna use it because then you could get this control to the perfect size and then everything would be just as you would want, right? So back to that 98. And so then now it's as clear as it can be. So now that we've got this and we know that it works, you guys have got everything you need from me. Yay, I'll see you later. Now, so let's talk about how I'd use this. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing, Control A, Control C. So for example, maybe I wanna send an email with a um, image in it, no big deal. So I would do Office 365 Outlook dot send email. There it is, V2. I'm gonna send it to myself right now. So Shane at Power Apps. 911.com, subject is a uh, pretty picture. And then right here, you know, in the body section, remember the body section of this email control is all HTML. So it could just be like, you know, here is the image. And then we could do a BR, which means break, we'll do two BRs. So get a little spacing. And then I'm gonna add an image tag, so IMG and then SRC for source equals. And now you want to paste in what I, you don't want to paste in what I just copied, but I'm going to do it because I think that's what you guys are going to accidentally do all the time. I'm going to paste that in and the text is all weird colors. Like what happened? That's because I pasted it in with that double quote. So it ended my string. Remember the body is a string. I don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the fact that in uh, HTML, double quotes and single quotes are generally interchangeable. So I'm gonna delete that out, make it a single quote, go all the way to the end, change that double quote to a single quote. So that is the image source. And then I need to close my image tag. And then I need to close my string and then close my email button. And so then now if we press this lovely little button, Alt, press the button, in just a second, I should get an email. Let me switch over and grab that real quick. And then look, there's my email. Here is the image and it has the image. So this is how you could, if you always wanted to do like a company logo and all the emails you send, you could bolt this in. One of my customers, when the app loads, they go out to Azure AD and they get all the like name, phone number, office location, and they make email signatures for their user dynamically. And then they bolt in their little company logo. So all the emails that come out of the program, because they forward those off to customers and stuff, all have a nice signature, a nice consistent signature. And so that is a real world application of that. So that's the key, you know, this, and this is in the case of oh, right here, this is in the case where you're trying to send the image, um, you know, that same image over and over again, right? That's, that's what this is about is using one image for lots of stuff. And also, once again, I'm going to reiterate the reason I shrink that image using the Snagit editor to begin the video was because if I had left the normal one, there would be like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more lines here of all of the text that made up the image. But because I had always wanted to shrink it down anyway, I would just be compressing that back. So I'd be wasting all my effort 
because you know the browser get really mad if you try to paste in three and a half megs of base 64. I'll be, I'll be honest, it, it's, it's gonna get angry with you. So you wanna get that image size down. So another way you might use this though, right? Cause we got three ways. So the first one was an email. The second one is in a PDF. So if you've ever seen my PDF video, right? One of the things I have you guys do in that very first PDF video is you go get the image from OneDrive, you let OneDrive get the base 64 for you, right? But that's a lot of work. If I'm using the same one, like one of my customers, we send out uh, invoice PDFs. They want the company logo in the top corner. So what did we do for them? In our HTML, you know, uh, so when I run the PDF, I say instant PDF is the name of my PDF creator, run. Here's all my HTML body. And so in there, I'm like image source equals, and then all of that base 64 again, right? So all of this comes over. And if we um, click on this create button here, what we should see is, let me switch over and grab it for you real quick. We get this, and then you have your little instant PDF. And so then now we've got Chewy's beautiful face staring at us very flippantly, quite frankly, but right there embedded. And I don't have to go fetch that in OneDrive all the time. I don't have to you know, worry about where that's coming from. I am just including that in my base HTML because the company logo doesn't change, right? All these companies are hundreds of years old. They might still have the same logo. So by going, getting the base 64 encoding once, I can then plug that in here without issue. Okay. And right, just so if you're wondering what does that flow look like, let me show you again that real quick. So right here, it's just a simple, you know, create file, get uh, into this folder using this name and the file content was just asking Power Apps. So Power Apps is doing everything. I'm converting it to PDF and I was just creating it again in OneDrive. And so if you wanted to email that off, you just have a, uh, you know, an email action here with an attachment. If you want to save it to SharePoint, I don't care where you do it. This create file and convert file step have to be here. Um, and remember, I have a couple of different videos out there on how to build PDFs. So we're not going to go through that today, but that's how I could plug this technique straight into that. Okay, and so then the last one here, this one's a little more closely to home. This is what made me make this video, and that is how to fix my component now that we know how to do this. So if we go over here to apps, and then we're going to go to my component library, and then we're going to edit my real library, right? This is the one I actually use for real stuff at this point. So that's, well, of course, why I'm going to demo from it. All right, I have it locked somewhere. Yeah, I have a browser window open right now somewhere that I can't find on my computer, so whatever. We'll just override it. Okay, so here in my header app, remember that we had this whole idea that the image was encoded here. So if I go into this other app, and if I pull that in, right, so we do that by get more components, we go to the real library, and we're going to grab that header. And if we import this in, the big issue with the way that I had done this was that it's going to, let's get this stuff out of the way, it doesn't pull in the image. This was like the one thing that made me go, Ugh! and then we, we talked about how to fix that. But what I want to do is I want to fix, um, fix it so it always comes across. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back over here to your real library and figure out, okay, I need this image called Power Apps with Chewy 5 by 12, and I need it size to be 264 by 65. So I would go over here, I'd say, all right, let's open this again. And so in here under logos is the Power Apps 512 right there. And so right now it's 512, right? That's why it's called 512. It's 512 wide. And so how wide did I tell it I wanted to be over here? I've already forgotten because I'm terrible at this. 264. Okay. So we'll go over here. And so for this, I will say, all right, resize this thing and make the width 264. All right. Looks good. So I'm going to apply that and I'm going to save this as 264 now. <laughs> I am very creative, but I'm at least consistent. And that's always the key to make this findable later. So 264. So then now I would go back out here to this guy's site. I'm going to go to the logos folder and I'm going to find the power apps 264. There you go. So see how much bigger this one is because it's a much bigger file. So a lot more stuff to carry around. I'm going to copy the image, which gets me the base 64. We'll go to the real library. And so then all I'm gonna do here is just uh, double quotes, paste in everything I just copied from that site and then put that in. Boom, there is my header image all set the way that I want. And it fits perfectly, so it's the minimal amount. Um, you know, maybe I'd play with it a little more, but uh, I think I'm good with that overall. So now we can save and publish. And so the next time that I go to use that, it is going to, um, 
pulled in automatically, right? So if we go back over here, oh, right here. So let's save this app because you have to save and close to get the component to refresh, right? So file, save. I named it DDDD, right? Very creative of me, I know. Though I am curious, before we leave, we're going to check one thing. I don't think I can go over here to this and say refresh. Yeah, see, there's not a refresh here. Okay. But if we close, and then if we open it back up, <laughs> bet you can remember that name, DDDD, weirdo. And so look, component library updates available. Notice this is still broken. We're going to review. It says a real library update. It doesn't tell me which component. I wish it did, but it doesn't. So we say update. And so then it gets new version. And then the media comes across. Ugh, that was driving me crazy in the other one. So we fixed it, guys. Okay. So that's, that's what I want to get across here, right? I wanted to make this video. I know it's not super exciting. But this is another core tool set. So if you watched this far and you've got these core tools, you're better at Power Apps for knowing how to do this, even if you don't immediately apply it. Even if you don't know what Base64 is. I don't know why I know what Base64 is. Who cares? The key is, is that we now know how to have those images where we need to have them encoded and do what we need to do with them. So, I don't know. I think with that, that's enough for uh, today for me. If you have any questions, leave me comments below. Um, always go check out training.powerapps911.com. You can download all of this fun stuff, right? Wouldn't that be exciting? And with all that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those. They're linked up here somewhere, so check them out. Thanks, and have a great day.